Hello, everyone. Welcome to Van Chicago Land Stories, the podcast, episode 31, season 2. And I'm your host, Pete Castanis, and this program is brought to you by Zenith Chroma, Col- Chroma Color TV. And here is a commercial from 1973. This is Big Beautiful Zenith Solid State Chroma Color 2. Built in the Zenith tradition of dependability and picture excellence. And now it comes in a brilliant new portable. Small, beautiful, solid-state chroma color, too. With a new solid-state chassis. A unique voltage regulator to protect components. And an advanced chroma color picture tube. You'll enjoy Zenith's dependability and the best color picture we've ever brought you. See the new solid-state chroma color tube portables from Zenith. Alrighty, I am back, and I hope you enjoyed that commercial for Zenith uh, TV. Uh, what a wonderful uh, product this came out of Chicago. Uh, I will talk about Zenith televisions on a later episode, hopefully soon, because uh, there's a lot of ground to cover for that particular company. Uh, I want to mention a couple things first uh, that I didn't, that I failed to mention on my previous episode, on episode 30. It's about the uh, early days of Riverview Park. I I didn't uh, say about the books that I use for reference on Riverview Park in Chicago. So I'm going to tell you right now the books that I used, and also on my videos for Riverview that's on my U- on my YouTube channel, which is under my name, Pika So the the first one is. Uh, is a paperback and it's called Riverview to Amusement Park Images of America that was published in September 6, 2004. It has just uh, a lot of published uh, photos never before seen and it was the author is Dolores Howe, H A U G H. The the second one is called Riverview Gone but for not forgotten from 1904 to 1967 and that was the author was Chuck Waldarsic I hope I pronounce his name if he hears me I'm sorry Chuck and that has a lot of pictures and it's a it's a very nice book it's color photos and uh I I don't own that book I rent I, I took it out of the library and and uh borrowed it so hopefully I'll go to uh return to the library and get it again so i like to see it and the third and last book i have which i did buy was laugh your troubles away the complete history of review park and the author was derek g and ralph lopez and i believe ralph lopez was a, an employee at the time at the review park and uh, the author i talked i spoke to him a couple of times on facebook he's a very nice guy and uh I told him I loved the book so much, and he was very pleased. And uh, so, and then, so that was uh, that was fun uh, putting the video together and getting all the history and the references. So, uh, if you are on YouTube, you could find it on under my name. And I mentioned that uh, my video was shown on on WGN Channel Nine a couple years ago, and. Uh, the uh, reporter Marcus Shock showed it, and uh, because he's a big roller coaster fan, and uh, he loved the video, and you know I appreciate it for him showing it. Uh, I, I really do. He's a wonderful guy, and uh, hopefully he'll be listening to this particular podcast episode. So I'll let him know, and I hope he enjoys it as much as you guys will. Okay, so uh, today I'll be talking about Riverview Park. Parks roller coasters, excuse me, and uh, so uh, I've only been to two roller coasters twice in my life. Once was in the summer of 1980, and and it was at Great America. It was not Six Flags Great America at the time. It was called Marriott's Great America. If people remember that, and uh, that opened in 1976. And Six Flags uh, took it over in, since 1984. And the first roller coaster I rode was the Demon. I rode the Demon. And uh, a funny thing about the Demon, uh, it was a it was a great ride. And uh, 
it was first called the turn of the century and then it just changed about three years from 1976 to 1979 and then in 79 they modified it a bit renamed it the demon and uh, i went with a, a few of my friends from high school and from the neighborhood from my old neighborhood and uh that was my first uh that was my first roller coaster. But the funny thing is, I, I wear glasses. I've been wearing glasses since I was uh, seven years old. And I was afraid I might lose them if I go on the roller coaster. So I bring my case with me. And, I, and I, when we arrived there and waited in line for the demon, <coughs> excuse me, I placed, I put my glasses in the case and then I boarded on the on the roller coaster. I didn't, I couldn't see very well, but I... It, I had a good time, but if I wore them, they'd probably be flown out of my head. And how would I get home? And uh, so, you know, I don't want to get in trouble with my parents because I lost my glasses at a roller coaster because at first they didn't want me to go on. I could think it's ridiculous. <laughs> so, and then the second one was the uh, the American. Um, I forgot what it was in 1998. I went on an outing with my company, American Express Travel. And I haven't been there, and you know it's changed. Six Flags has changed since then, since uh, in the ni- since 1980, you know. And uh, so I boarded that, and uh, it wasn't a demon. I forgot what it was called. Uh, Got to look it up. So uh, that was in 1998, and I did the same thing. I did the same thing. I took my glasses and I put them in the case. So I didn't want to, I don't want to lose them again. <laughs> no way. I don't want to. Ah, here. Um, so the other, the other coaster, oh, the, the Raging Bull. I rode the Raging Bull. And that I did the same thing, like I mentioned before. I took my glasses off, put them in the case, and I rode it. It was fun. And that was the last time I rode a roller coaster. I don't know if I ride one again. We'll see. If I'm invited or have an urge to go, we'll see about that. Okay. Another thing, okay, first, uh, like I mentioned before, I will talk about roller coasters in Riverview Park, and there were a lot of them. Uh, I won't go into much detail. Maybe one or two I will. So I'm going to read off a list, and then I will tell you what was there first and what was there last. And here we go. Uh, the first roller coaster was the White Flyer that uh, started in 1904 when Riverview Park opened, and it uh, stopped in the early 20s. Second one was called Pikes Peak Scenic Railway. It wasn't really a roller coaster, maybe it was in a way, and that and that was replaced by the G Wiz roller coaster. And the G Wiz was uh, let's see that. Pikes Peak, yeah, uh, Pikes Peak Scenery opened in 1907 to 1911, and then in 1912, there was the G-Wiz, and that was replaced by the Greyhound, and that was there for a long, long time, to, and until 1963, and it was replaced by the Jetstream, and in 1963, that was only there for about um, two years, from 1965 all the way to 1967 when it ended. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, that was the last roller coaster for the jet stream. And then uh, the next one was the top. And uh, that was from 1907 to 1916. Next is the Royal Gorge Scene Railway. That was torn down. And that was only there from 1908 to 1920. Torn down for the Pippin, which the Pippin uh, opened in 1921 through 1937. And then it uh, they renamed it the Silver Flash from 1938 to 1960, and then they just dropped the silver, the word silver, and then it was also the, called the Flash, and it was there from 1961 to 1967. Next one, uh, we have the uh, aerial ro- aerial coaster, also known as the Potsdam Railway, and it was there from 1908 to 1910. It was there for two years, and it was removed from, and it was. For the blue streak, and this is number one, and the blue streak number one was there from 1911 to 1923, and it was removed. And the Bob's came, uh, the Bob's roller coaster uh, took its place. I will talk about Bob's in a minute. 
Okay, and then uh, next we have, like I mentioned, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, then we have the Velvet Coaster. That was from 1907 to 1919, and it was removed for the Big Dipper. And the Big Dipper opened in 1920 to 1935, and then it was renamed the Zephyr. I think they did modi modifications of all the roller coasters I mentioned. So we had the Big Dipper, and then uh, it was renamed, and then it was called the Zephyr from 1936 to 1939, and then it was called the the Comet. And that was there from 1942 to all the way to when Riverview closed in 1967. And it had 17 dips, went from four cars to five car trains in 1966 and got a new platform and transfer table that year. So that's nice. That's very nice. And then uh, let's see, uh, we have the Jackrabbit. And uh, that was from 1914 to 1932. And then we have the Cannonball from 1919 to 1925. And uh, not very long. It doesn't stay very long. Let's see. Oh, now we have the Skyrocket. Skyrocket was from 1923 to 1935. And then it was also known as the Blue Streak 2. And the Blue Streak 1 was uh, taken over by the Bob's roller coaster. And the Blue Streak 2 was from 1936 to 1958. And then it, then they modified it to the Fireball. A lot of people love the Fireball. They said it was fast and you dip really quick. And it was from 1959 to 1967. I mentioned the Fireball in a previous uh, podcast episode. Uh, let's see. Next, we have the Flying Turns from 1935 to 1967. The Wild Mouse from 1958 to 1967. And uh, the last one I mentioned, uh, the last one I mentioned before was the jet stream. That was only for two years, from sixty-five to sixty-seven. And then I will talk about the Bobs. The Bobs were there from nineteen twenty-four to nineteen sixty-seven. And uh, before I mention, talk about the Bobs, there was a Kitty Bobs ride. And it was just for little kids. It wasn't that dangerous, so it didn't last very long. It was from nineteen twenty-six to nineteen thirty-four. There's a picture. I saw a picture of that. It didn't look very tame and you know not very threatening you know you don't lose your life on that but uh, i don't know why they stopped it but it looked like fun okay and then now we'll talk about the bobs roller coaster i will pull it up and i will tell you a little about that and the bobs was a wooden roller coaster and that opened from 1924 all the way to the end to 1967 and uh, that was a wooden roller coaster, and a lot of people still talk about it today. They love that one. It was uh, iconic, iconic uh, roller coaster. And uh, there was a man that was the oh, here we go. The man who operated the Bob's, his name was Carl Jeske. And he, I found a picture of him. Standing in front of the Bobs, and I put I put and posted on my Facebook page on Van Chicago Land, and then I had a I had a message sent to me from his grandson, and he says thank you for uh, for posting my grandpa, you know I love this picture. I, t I he asked me where I found it, and I found it on a website, and I told him about it, and uh, he said my family was very very pleased seeing that uh, he was a wonder. He said he was a wonderful man, you know, and worked very hard. He was uh, very disciplined, a hardworking man. And the boss was there, you know, it was built. Uh, according to professional reviews of the blueprints, the maximum height was 64.75 feet and a drop of 59.58 feet and reached speeds of up to 50 miles per hour. And so that you can understand how that, that 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 roller coaster was popular how you know people loved it and um, i posted a few photos on my facebook page and twitter and uh so uh they you know people who went to riverview they i think they look forward to that roller coaster when they visit it, other than the other attractions you know, uh, as speaking of the other attractions on Riverview, I will talk about the others uh, in a later time. I'm going into more detail because Riverview Park 
has a lot of ground to cover. Okay. So that, that'll be all for the roller coasters at Riverview Park. And then the next thing I will talk about is Teuton Baker. And he was a uh, famous uh, Chicago entertainer. And he was a spokesperson for Riverview Park. And uh, here's a snippet of a radio interview he did with Chuck Shaden, who hosted Those Were the Days in 1972. And he's singing the... Riverview song, so uh, just uh, take a listen. Say, Dick Tuton Baker, yeah, the Riverview commercial. Oh, yes, come out the Riverview, it's very good for you. That's the song I made up. Everybody <laughs> says, even now, they'll say, sing the Riverview song. You know, there never was, was actually a Riverview song. It was mostly a, a mess of screams and yells and hollers and go to the Riverview and laugh your troubles away yeah. and then scream and wave my arms. So I wrote this little this little ditty, and when they ask for the Riverview song, that's what I sing. Come out to Riverview, it's very good for you to laugh your troubles away. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoyed the uh, radio clip of Tuton Baker. Oh, what a wonderful man he was. He seems so happy, so happy. So I'll talk about uh, I'll talk about to him uh, his biography, how he got started, and uh, what was he famous for. So here we go. Uh, he was born on May 2nd, 1916. His real name was Richard. And uh, he uh, he began playing the piano at two and a half years old. And he was, uh, so he was, uh, seemed like a gifted man. <laughs> so he could play any, play any type of music. And uh, he played the piano and uh, joined um, like some bands. And then he... Uh, Started entertaining around, you know, the Chicagoland area. And then he uh, played nightclubs. And then he, 1939, he started as, he began a job as a disc jockey at WJJD AM. And uh, then he, uh, he quit the radio station to concentrate on his nightclub work. And then he was given his own radio show on WGN Radio in 1944 called The One Man Show. And, uh, you know, that's how he started his career in WGN because of that show. And then uh, when WGN TV uh, went on the air in April, 19, April 5th, 1948, excuse me, he started his own show called Wonder House. And it was a puppet show. And uh, that aired five days a week at 7.30 p.m. And uh, he f and it featured a marionette that looks like Baker. He was called Half Ton, not Two Ton. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I wish I could find the, you know, clips of that show. But uh, so it got very expensive. So it got canceled. And then he uh, then he had another radio show, the Two Ton Baker Show. And it was there, it was there for a long time, you know. And that, then on then from 1952 to 1956, he hosted a children's television program on WBKB. I think it's uh, I don't know if it was on Channel Two or Channel Seven. I, I forgot. So I keep forgetting about you know explaining that. So and it was called the Happy Pirates. And it featured uh, Squawky the Parrot, and uh, he had he shown the cartoons that were shown in the theater. And uh, so, yeah, that lasted only four years. And then from 50, 1957 to 62, he was a spokesperson for Riverview Amusement Park, which you heard the, uh, the uh, radio clip that you just heard. And he did television commercials. I wish I could find a television commercial. That would be wonderful to watch. And uh, those commercials lasted until the park closed in 1967. And, you know, him saying, laughing your troubles away at Riverview, and he would laugh and all that. And he, he was, one of, I think he was famous for just that instead of his entire career. And then, uh, let's see. Then he started in one movie, and it was called Mickey One that starred Warren Beatty in 1964. And that was the only movie he acted. Uh, you know, I haven't seen the movie in a long, long time. Not uh, Probably on Channel 9, the late movie. I'm going to see it again and try to find Tutan Baker. Because when I saw it, I didn't notice. 
And then in 1964, he hosted a uh, show called Corral, Corral 26 on the WCIU, on the U. And he presented movies, uh, Western movies, and he interviewed people. He was singing, <coughs> excuse me, and promoting. And then he, they were sponsored by Bosco Chocolate Syrup. I used to love Bosco. The Milk Amplifier. And that was only ended for two, uh, only two years. And uh, so that ended in 1966. And then he still entertained at nightclubs. And he was there. He was at the Ivanhoe Theater that was on Clark Street from 65 to 1970. And then uh, the last job he worked at was at Magnum Chateau. And I think that's in Lyons, Illinois. He was there. And then he, he passed away on May, May 4th, 1975. And uh, let's see, how old he was he when he died? He was 59, very young, very young. So uh, let's see what else. Uh, let me see what other things he did. You know, he was on the radio and... Uh, Yeah, so you know, you would remember him. He was a very large man, and but he was, he seemed like a pussycat. You know, he wouldn't hurt anybody. He did recordings. You know, he did the r nursery r rhyme time. Uh, yeah, he did a lot of nursery rhymes. He sang those. You know, and uh, there was and oh, here's one. It was called "I Like Stinky Cheese." Oh, it must be funny. I would I would love to hear that when I have a chance. And then. Uh, Let's see what else. Nor beer in heaven. I'm uh, clink clank in my piggy bank. <laughs> I love these. These are great. These are great. So I'm going to listen to them soon. And uh, like I said before, he uh, he was on television a lot. He did the Wonder House and uh, and the Happy Pirates. I think a lot of people remember that show. And uh, and then, yeah, for it was from 1952 to 1956. So it was on Channel 4, which became Channel 2. And then when WBKB moved to Channel 7, the, the show moved over there. So we cleared that up. And uh, so uh, so that was, that was fun. So he was a wonderful man. And... Uh, you know, I hope a lot of people, young people would um, look into him, like, like they would read some history about it. Because he, he was famous before Ray Rayner, Frazier Thomas, Bob Bell, who played Bozo, not Ned Locke, you know, uh, Bill Jackson. He was, uh, he was the predecessor of uh, great Chicago entertainment. Okay. So that'll be all for today. Um, and... Uh, the previous episode on my podcast, that was a Father's Day episode. So today is Father's Day, and I hope everyone will have a wonderful Father's Day. Um, my father in heaven, I wish him a happy Father's Day, too. And uh, this is episode 31, season 2 of Vanish Chicago and Stories. And I'm your host, Pete Castanis. And I will say bye-bye for now. And here is Ray Rayner saying bye-bye for now to all of you. Thank you for joining me, and have a good day. Bye-bye. We have to go. Bye-bye-bye.